well, the treaty negotiations uh, have made right, really very good progress over the course of this year. It's taken a lot longer than people um, maybe would have liked, but that perhaps reflects the complexity of the issues that we're talking about and the internal processes of, of, of the European Union, which during the course of 2021 um, did mean that things were pushed back a little bit. Um, but we have had now, I think, nine full rounds of negotiations between the, the UK um, and the EU. And when I say UK, of course this is UK, with the UK is the government of Gibraltar fully involved in absolutely everything um, that's going on. Um, and, and as I say, we have made a lot of very good progress, which is why we are um, you know, hopeful that we will be able to get this uh, over the line um, by the end of this year. That's what um, all parties are working towards. Um, and so we're really putting every effort into it. I'm seeing a lot of, a huge amount of work from, uh, from, you know, from the government of Gibraltar with whom we're working so closely, from ourselves on the UK government side and from the Spanish side, we're putting a lot of effort into getting this over the line. Just how big a role have you played? How involved have you been? Well, as British ambassador to Spain, uh, part of my involvement is talking to the Spanish government about um, our positions, what's going on, understanding um, Spanish positions. It's making sure I'm fully conversant with um, the, the view of the government of Gibraltar and of the people of Gibraltar. I mean, I've, I've been following Gibraltar since I, I, I think I first went to Gibraltar in 1986 or thereabouts um, as, a, as a young hockey player to be thrashed by your excellent <laughs> hockey teams. Um, and, and I have been, um, it wasn't very fantastic, um, but it was great fun. Uh, the, and, I, and I've followed Gibraltar, like Gibraltar ever since and been back several times in my current role. So that's an important part of it. And of course, I'm a core part of the um, UK government team working on the negotiations too. I think people are concerned because it's taking so long yeah. and obviously when you have a vacuum people fill it yeah. and there's all sorts of rumours that it's the MOD that's stopping yeah. it, it's that Spain keeps moving the goalposts, yeah. so why is it taking so long? I can understand completely that people um, would uh, sort of wonder about the length of time um, because and I know as well you know, from having from, from I mean, being in Gibraltar, visited, talked to people, walked the streets, and, and also on the Spanish side, um, the, it's people's livelihoods we're talking about here. It's the whole way of life in some respects. The, you know, what we're trying to achieve with this agreement is fluid mm -hmm. movement of goods and people um, across the border uh, in order precisely to be able to preserve that and to have what, what we've talked about as this area of shared prosperity. And we don't want that to be a slogan. I mean, it sounds slogan-like. It, it, we want it to be a reality. That's the objective on all sides here. As we've heard, from, I've heard Chief Minister say that many times. I've heard the Spanish government say that. That's very much our shared objective. Um, the reality is what we're negotiating here is a sort of a trade and cooperation agreement for Gibraltar. It's a big, complex agreement. Uh, we achieved the political framework, the New Year's Eve agreement in, uh, in 2020. Then what happened was the European Union has its own internal processes for agreeing a mandate. That took quite a long time and we didn't start the actual negotiations until October 2021. We have though had you know, nine rounds of negotiations. We're about to have another one um, uh, at the end of this month. We've made a huge amount of progress on a lot of different areas. So it's just, I think the reason it's taking so long is it's a long, complicated, difficult um, uh, negotiation uh, covering a wide range of areas. Um, but as I say, we are very, very committed to making it work and we've made great progress. So we're continuing to work to get it over the line. The negotiations are over Gibraltar, obviously, as you said, crucial for us. How they followed from Madrid? How would you say the man in the street of Madrid follows the negotiations? Well, I think that they see, we see uh, uh, moments of interest when, when there's a particular announcement or a particular thing happens and it's in the, in the press a bit more. I don't think it's front of mind of everybody every, every day. Um, as you'd expect, I think much more so actually in the Campo de Gibraltar, where people's um, everyday lives and livelihoods are much more affected by what's happening. So it depends where you are in Spain as to how this affects you directly. You're no stranger to Brexit, having been the Director of Communications at the Department of Exiting the European Union. Not asking you whether you're a Remainer or a Brexiteer, how you feel, but how do you think it's gone? What sort of impact do you feel it's had? Well, Brexit happened uh, nearly three years ago. Now, so for me, Brexit, Brexit went, as it were. Brexit is history, and what we now have is a new relationship between the United Kingdom and the European Union. I think, and here, this was something I, I found quite a lot 
um, when, I, when I came to Spain and a lot of conversations here, people sort of suddenly wondered, well, what's happened to the UK? Has it suddenly changed? Are we now something else? And a lot of what I've been doing here is trying to explain, in fact, that the UK remains the UK. So just as the UK's, in these negotiations, just as the UK's support for Gibraltar, the UK's position on British sovereignty hasn't changed one bit. Uh, similarly, the UK's values, of the UK's approach to um, international relations, approach to the world, all the things we have in common with our European friends and neighbours haven't changed. And I think that the war in Ukraine on the back of Putin's brutal uh, invasion has actually shown that. The tremendous UK contribution has been, um, has been seen here in Spain, has been appreciated and respected here in Spain. It's a reminder that the UK at its heart hasn't changed at all. We recently saw the annual FCO Tertulias in Oxford celebrating the Anglo-Spanish relations. How much of a dent do you feel a no deal would make on these relations with all it entails? I'm not thinking about no deal. I understand completely um, that there need to be preparations for any eventuality and I understand that the government of Gibraltar has been um, preparing extremely thoroughly, as is the responsible and correct thing to do um, for such an event, just as the UK government did in the Brexit negotiations. I think that's entirely commendable, but that's not what anybody wants to happen. Um, and all our efforts are going on getting that deal. How, how, how much easier would it make your life? Oh, no, <laughs> I'm not going to talk about that. Everybody, any, everybody wants to have a deal. That, that's just, uh, it's not about whether life is easier or not. It's about delivering a deal for the people of Gibraltar and for the people of the Campo de Gibraltar. It's about how much difference it would make for their lives, for your lives. That's what it's about.